Hello guys and welcome to another calculus video. In this video we're going to be solving this cool integral equation we have here for f of x. Um, and I think um, many of you will find this quite interesting. I think it's a pretty uh, daunting looking problem, though it's actually not too difficult once you know the neat trick that we're going to use to solve it. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So the first issue that I'm sure many of you are wondering about right now is how exactly are we going to solve this since it doesn't really look like we have enough information to solve the problem. I mean, usually when we have an integral, it's just going to spit out a constant. And so there's many different functions that could um, be integrated to spit out that same constant, right? So in general, when we have equations with integrals, we're going to need more parameters than that. And that's where this z comes in. Now, for any of you who know why this z is here, it's a really big hint on how to solve the problem. Um, uh, first off, because for, for this z, we need this z to be greater than or equal to 1, because otherwise this bottom part is going to have a 0 and it's going to diverge. So just a restriction on this problem. And that also means that this part, uh, 1 over z, is going to be less than or equal to 1. And so that's going to help us um, use the series definition for the die logarithm as well. So, um, if you guys want to go ahead and give it a shot, I would greatly recommend it. It's going to be a really fun problem, and yeah, hope you guys enjoy. Alright, so, the first thing we need to talk about in order to solve this problem is exactly how we're going to get enough information to solve it. And the way we're going to do this is actually using a transform. And this is, um, you know, like the Laplace transform, or the Z transform or maybe both of them at the same time. There's a lot of different transforms uh, in math, but in general, something that's pretty interesting about them is that they're actually usually one-to-one. -one. And what I mean by that is that when you have one function as an input, that function will have one output, right? There's only one result of that integral, but also there's only one function which can produce that output. And so our transform that we're gonna be using also is one-to-one, -one, which means that there's only one f of x which can give us this exact um, this exact result right here. So let's go ahead and solve for that function. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do anytime you see um, something subtracting one on the bottom is you're gonna think, how can I use this to make a geometric series? So we're gonna start with doing that. We're gonna divide on the top and bottom by z e to the x. So we're just gonna get f of x on the top and on the bottom we're gonna get one minus one over z e to the negative x dx. And then we're just gonna expand this as a geometric series. So we're gonna get the integral from zero to infinity of f of x times the sum from n equals zero to infinity. Now keep in mind, since z is greater than or equal to 1, and uh, we're talking about x going from 0 to infinity, 1 over z e to the negative x is always going to be um, have an absolute value less than 1. So we can apply the geometric series to this. This is going to just be z to the negative n, e to the negative n x, right? dx. Next, we're going to bring this summation outside. And we can also bring our z outside because that has nothing to do with x, so it's completely unrelated. So we can bring that outside of this integral right here. And something that you will notice here is that we have actually turned this, this uh, weird transform of our function into a sum of the Laplace transform. So as you can see here, this is actually the Laplace transform of f of x. And so that allows us to eliminate the integral part of our um, problem, but we still have to deal with the summation part. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace this with the Laplace transform of f of t. Actually, I'll just say uh, Laplace transform of f of t equals big F of s, and then we're just going to write this as big F of n, since we have e to the negative n x, right? Now, some of you who have watched some of my previous videos may know that this is actually what's called the Z transform. So now we're introducing another transform. We've used, um, this is a discrete transform and it's also one to one. So we can just write this as the Z transform of the Laplace transform of F of X. And we know that this is equal to Z 
li2 of 1 over z. All right, let's go ahead and solve for our function. All right, so the first thing we're going to want to do is crack open that z transform so that we can solve for the Laplace transform of f of t. So in order to do that, we just need, uh, since we know the z transform of a function is just the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of z to the negative n, f of n. All we need to do is uh, find the coefficients of uh, the powers of 1 over z, or uh, z to the negative n, right? z to the negative 1. And then we, we can match those up, and we can find our function f of n. So let's expand our dilogarithm as a power series. So we're going to have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of z to the n over n squared. Or, I'm sorry, 1 over z to the n, so it's going to be z to the negative n. And this looks a lot like our um, z transform right here. The thing is, this starts from n equals 0, this starts from n equal 1. So let's go ahead and just shift that over 1. So we're going to have this be n equals 0. And we're just going to subtract 1 from n. So we're going to have 1 over z to the n. But of course, we need to subtract 1. So, or I guess, yeah, we need to add 1 to n. So this is going to be n plus 1. And on the bottom, this is going to be n plus 1 squared. And if we go ahead and absorb this z, we can cancel it with this plus 1, since 1 over z times z is just 1. And so we now have a pretty nice power series. We can rewrite this again as z to the negative n. And we can see that our coefficient of z to the negative n is just 1 over n plus 1 squared. So that tells us that our big F of s is 1 over s plus 1 squared. And for those of you who are familiar with Laplace transforms, this is super easy to do. Um, since we have everything in terms of S, s plus 1, all we need to do is find the inverse Laplace transform of um, 1 over s squared, and then we multiply it by e to the negative uh, t. And the reason we're doing this is because that's just how the Laplace transform works. When you multiply a function by e to the negative t and then take the Laplace transform, the Laplace transform gets shifted over by 1. And for the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s squared, that's something super common. That's just equal to t. And you can also do that using the Laplace transform power rule. So overall, our f of t, or I'll write it as f of x, is going to be equal to x e to the negative x, and that's our function. So despite having very little information from the start, um, we were able to sort of crack open that interval. We figured out that it was actually a composition of two different transforms, and then we sort of just peeled back the layers as you would usually do when solving an equation, and we found our function f of x. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I really liked the idea behind it, and I thought it was a pretty cool trick uh, we got to use. If you want to see more videos like this, please let me know in the comments. Um, yeah, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time.